Well hello internet and welcome to my Jade video tutorial. In this one tutorial I'm going to teach you pretty much everything you need to know about the Jade templating engine. And Jade is a templating engine for Node.js and it compiles into basic HTML. And like handlebars, which I've already made a tutorial about, Jade is going to help you separate your HTML from dynamic content. And many people find generating HTML with a preprocessor provides for more readable code that's easier to maintain. And enough talking, I'm going to jump over and start writing some code. Alright, so before we can start writing that code, we're going to need Node.js. So you're going to go to nodejs.org forward slash whatever, en, download, da 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 da, find the operating system you use, and download Node.js. If you want a more specific step by step walkthrough on how to install Node.js, look for my Express tutorial where I show you all that, but it's pretty straightforward and you should have no problem with it. Then, after you have Node.js installed, you're going to have to open up the Node Package Manager and then install Jade, and you're going to be able to do that quite easy just by going npm. And this works if you're on Windows or OS X, doesn't matter what you're on. Install and Jade G, and Jade's going to install for you. And there you go, you're ready to go. Now what you need to do is figure out what directory you're going to be storing all your Jade files in. And from there we're going to be able to compile these and turn them into HTML or JavaScript. But what I'm going to do right now is open up Sublime Text. And I'm going to do that with S-U-B-L followed by a period. Hit enter and it's going to open everything in Sublime Text. But you can use any text editor that you would like. Okay, so on the left side of the screen I have Sublime Text, on the right side I have the terminal, and I have Google Chrome running right here, and let's just start writing some code. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover doc types and how to generate those, and to do so you're just going to type in doc type like that in a file, I called mine jade.jade. I'm going to save that, and then over inside of my terminal or my command prompt, I'm going to type in jade, followed by the name of the file, and it's going to render that for me. Then I can come up here, reload it, and view page source, and you can see right there, doc type HTML. That is the default that we're going to be using with doc types, and for the most part, that's what you're going to use all the time. However, there are a couple other different document types. You can use doc type XML. You can also come in and use transitional. And this is exactly how you're going to type it to generate everything. And transitional just means that the document can contain presentational or deprecated elements. You could also come in and type in strict, which states that it doesn't include presentational or deprecated elements. You could also type in frame set, which is pretty much exactly like transitional, except it's also going to allow for the use of frame set. Basic, which is basically used for documents that are going to be used with PDAs, pagers, or set-top boxes. Again, you're not going to be using these that often. Or mobile, which are going to be XHTML documents that are specifically aimed at mobile devices. And that's basically all you need to know about doc types inside of Jade. Then we're going to generate our HTML tag, and to do that we're just going to type in HTML, and that's it. It's going to automatically generate it. If you'd like to come in and include other Jade files inside of here, like let's say I wanted to get my header section inside of here, let's first off go and create a new file called head.jade. And inside of this, I'm going to define my head tag, and then I'm also going to define my title for my web page, and I'm just going to call this tutorial. You're not going to put quotes around this or anything, and that's how you define that. And then let's say that I wanted to include jQuery inside of this. You would just type in script like this, followed with the source, and if we wrap that around, you can see exactly how that's defined. We could save this and jump back over into jade.jade and include that file. And to include that file, what you're going to need to do is indent and then follow that with include dot forward slash head dot jade. We could save that. And then while we're at it, why don't we come in also and type in body and save that. Come over here, render all this. Reload, nothing shows. Do a view page source, and you can see that all that stuff was automatically generated. You can also see the head section was opened and closed, as well as the body and the final HTML tag. So it's going to generate all those for you. And that's basically how Jade works. Jade is going to use indentation rather than tags to define elements. And each level of indents is going to create a new block that's going to create a child element in the element above it. So the indent means that include in this situation and body in this situation are going to be between HTML tags. And that's how that continues to work. Now as I showed you right here, this is going to automatically generate the HTML or this guy down here typing in jade, jade tut dot jade. Let's say you also wanted to come in here and generate the JavaScript that would be used for this guy. In that situation, you would type in jade dash dash client dash dash no debug followed by jade tut dot jade. 
and hit enter and the JavaScript file is going to be created for you and you'd be able to open that up and see exactly how that all looks. You can see that all the input or all the output to the HTML file is all right there for us. And let's just do a word wrap so you can see that all in one place. And all the code in this tutorial, of course, is available for free in the description, so feel free to click on that if you want to look at it closer. So, just wanted to show you that, not something you'd use all the time, but wanted to include it nonetheless. Now let's come in here and generate a little bit more. Now we want to have divs inside of the body tag, so I'm going to indent, and I'm going to type in div here. And then let's say that I wanted to also include paragraphs inside of this div. I could just put p for paragraph, and then first paragraph, and you're going to be able to either put the text in the element directly after the tag, or you could define a text block by going in here with paragraph like this, indent, and then put a pipe. And in this situation, we would be able to mix in other HTML elements. So let's say I wanted to throw some lorem ipsum inside of this guy, and then follow that with a break statement, which is this guy right here. And then we wanted to put our next block of information directly afterwards. That's what we do, just use the pipe in both situations. And we could save that, render it, and now you can see that information starting up here, and you can also see where the break statement took effect right here. So that's how we would do that. There's another way also to work with paragraphs, however, and that would be to come in here and put a paragraph tag followed by a period, and you would do this whenever you were working with just a simple block of text. But we're gonna put our paragraph back here because we don't want the paragraph inside of this paragraph, but make sure that we indent right here. Paste in some new text, you can see right here, I'm also going to be able to define HTML elements inside of it, and they will take effect. And don't forget to come over here and render this, and whenever you do and reload, you can see there is the new paragraph, and right here that the HTML elements that we used therein are going to be affected by those elements. When we come in here and create another paragraph, we're going to keep it on the same level. And this time I'll show you that attributes are basically going to be defined in parentheses and they're going to be separated with commas. So let's say we want to define an ID, we just put that inside of parentheses and we could say something like second paragraph or something like that. Well, I guess it would be the fourth paragraph, but whatever. We're then going to separate that with a comma. And yes, you could go on to the next line if you'd like to. You could also come in here and define a class. And we could come in and say something like lorem ipsum and put a space, and you could do something like very important or import, and then follow that with a period, very important. And then after that, after it's been indented, we could throw in some more information, render it, reload it, and you can see there's the additional information we threw inside of there. And if we say we want to view page source, you can see that we did that. And you can also see here is the ID inside of the paragraph tag, as well as the class, both classes actually. Now divs are going to be used by default anytime you do not provide a specific tag. However, that's only going to work as long as you are defining a class or ID and you would define an ID with a hash symbol like this or a dot whenever you're using classes. So let's start off with an ID right here and I'm going to type in something like second div and then I can of course come in here and define multiple classes for this guy so I could do something like lorem ipsum put another period and very import and then directly after that I could just paste in some more lip lorem ipsum come over here render it and you're gonna see that div shows up inside of there and if we say view source you're gonna see that the div shows up inside of there and both the ID and the class are also going to be defined inside of it now let's create some things that are a little bit more interesting inside of here let's say that we wanted to generate a list of elements just type in UL just like you do with all the other different tags and then you want to generate your list items First off, we would come in here and define an ID, BBP, like this, and we could say list item, like that. We could then come in and define a link and say that it has the attribute for HF, and let's just keep this simple and just have it be nothing for now. And we could say Barry Bonds, and then we could do the same thing for all the other different list elements inside of this. And we could say something like Hank Aaron and Babe Ruth. Reload it, and you can see that all those pop up directly inside of there. Another thing we can do with list elements, however, in much the same idea here, is to just go UL like this and define everything on one line. So we could go LI, and let's call this hero list item, follow that with a colon, and then go A H reference, and then follow that off with Batman, and then do exactly the same thing for as many other different heroes as you'd like to list. So let's just come in and go Superman, 
and the flash and you can see that those automatically generated as well. So there's multiple different ways we can use these different list items or we can generate list items. Now let's take a look at interpolation. Basically you're going to use interpolation to execute JavaScript in a template by putting a dash and a space in front of said JavaScript. Now one thing that I forgot, let's talk about comments here for a second. If you do not want a comment to show up in the HTML, you do it this way. Like I say, it won't see me. So that's a comment that will not show up inside of the HTML. However, if you just put two forward slashes like this, can see me these comments will show up in the HTML. So there you go. And, and it's automatically going to convert it into HTML comments just in both those situations. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, let's go take a look at interpolation, which is just going to allow us to come in here and execute JavaScript directly inside of here. So let's say I wanted to find a new variable. I'm going to call it my name. I'm just going to put Derek inside of there like that. I'm now going to be able to come in here and place variables in HTML by just coming in and defining a tag and then say something like hello and then put whatever variable I want to show up inside of here between these two curly brackets. And you can see, hello Derek shows up right there. I'm also going to be able to execute JavaScript pretty much any place I use those curly brackets. So I could do something like one, two, three, four times five, six, seven, eight is equal to right like this and then go one, two, three, four times five, six, seven, eight. And you can see that automatically went in there and calculated that for me. So you can see it's quite easy to come in there and execute JavaScript, which is very cool. You're also going to be able to use this code inside of attributes. So let's say I want to come in and define a variable called website, and I wanted to put my website inside of here. I can do that. And then I can come in here and create a link, hreference, and then inside of the quotes, put our dollar sign and type in website close that off and then define whatever the link's going to be and you can see that that automatically popped up there and if I click on that it's going to take me to a website. I'm also going to be able to come in here and create arrays say heroes is equal to Wonder Woman, Supergirl, and Batgirl and let's turn this into a list once again. Might as well just copy this because it's going to be very similar to this. Paste that inside of there except in this situation I'm going to say hash symbol and then I'm going to curly brackets and heroes and I'm going to reference the zero index right there for that array. And let's come in here and do the same thing for these other two. So there's the one index and there's the second one. And make sure you spell heroes correctly here. Reload it. And there you can see all those showed up. Another thing you can do is shorten tag names. However, this isn't always the best of ideas, but let's say that I wanted to shorten block quote just down to BQ, for example. Something you wouldn't want to do normally, but I'm just going to cover it just so that you can see that it can be done. So we can go block quote like this and then go dollar sign BQ and we'll just say bad idea like that. It's a bad idea because people won't know what these tags do. And you can see a bad idea shows right up inside of there. If we check the source, it's going to be a block quote. You're also going to be able to use an equal sign when a block contains only a variable. So let's come in here and define a variable called Batman data. And in between quotes, we'll just throw some information about Batman in there. And you'll see that you'll be able to come in here and go paragraph equal to and Batman data. And it's automatically going to create that paragraph and throw all that information inside of there. If you play with this stuff a little bit, you'll remember it. It's very straightforward. Another thing that's kind of neat is you can also do the same with attribute values that are stored in an object. So let's say you want to create an input that is going to be for first name input. You can just come in here like this and define type and say text. Separate that with comma, then say name, colon, F name like that. You could then come in and create a span, first name, and then input, and say type is equal to fni dot type, and name is equal to fni dot name. And I'm rendering this each time. You can see that shows up right there. And you're going to see if you go in and view the source that the type and name are going to be defined exactly as I have them right here. Another thing to know is that tags are going to be encoded for security reasons. So let's say we would come in and we would say something like some info and then we could come in and define italics. Very interesting. And then close that off. You might be surprised by what you see here. If we would then come in and go P is equal to some info. We reload it and you're going to see that the tags are not used. If you would actually want to turn off encoding, all you would have to do is put an exclamation mark like that and now it's going to show up exactly as you would be expected. And if you'd like to just for completion reasons want to see another way to do this you could also go some info with an exclamation point before the curly brackets and get exactly the same results. 
very interesting as you can see. And let's keep going on here. Now let's take a look at different logic operators that Jade provides us. We're going to be able to provide different output depending upon different conditions. So let's come in here and let's say that we want to have a different output whenever it's nighttime versus daytime. So I'm going to come in and create a new date object and I want to get the hour out of that date object. Do something like get hours. I'm then going to be able to perform different output depending upon an if condition. So I'm going to say something like if hour is greater than or equal to 6 and hour is less than or equal to 17. Then I'm going to indent this. I'm going to say h3. Daytime is what I want to output in that situation. Then what's a little bit weird is I got to put a dash right here before that closing curly bracket. And then I'm going to say else. Once again, I'm going to type in h3 nighttime. And then come down here, put another dash inside of this. And just for the heck of it, I'll show you another way of using if statements that's a little bit more straightforward. You can basically write the if statements just using regular indentation, which is the way that I normally prefer to do it. So we're going to define another variable, and I'm going to give it a value of 18. Then I'm going to say if age is greater than or equal to 16, and age is less than 18, put an indentation there, h3, say something like you can drive. Then you can come down and say else if age is greater than or equal to 18, h3 tag, you can drive and vote. And then finally we go else, h3, you can wait till you are 16, something like that. Rendered it, loaded it, and you can see the nighttime shows up here properly and you can drive shows up there properly. And that's all based off of my current time here on my computer so you might get different results of course. Another conditional operator that's available to us here inside of Jade is called unless and unless is going to come out negative if a condition is true so it's sort of like the opposite of if. So we could say something like age unless age is greater than or equal to 16 and then h3 you'll drive at 16 would get executed. And you could use else statements it was just like you did previously and we could say h3 and you can drive and you're going to see that you get you can drive shows up right there because the age was greater than 16. And another conditional operator is the ternary operator so let's say we want to do something like day time is equal to and we would put hour greater than or equal to 6 and hour less than or equal to 17 down here put a space then we're going to put a question mark and if this comes back as true then daytime in this situation is going to be assigned to the variable daytime otherwise nighttime is going to be assigned to that variable and then we would be able to output that information just by going h3 and putting in the variable name and reloading it and you can see that nighttime shows up right there and now I'll show you the final conditional that's available to us and it is called case which works very much like switch works to find another variable inside of here name and let's say the name in this situation is Sue we're then going to be able to say case name and when Sally we're going to output h3 and hi Sally and then you're not going to put else or anything like that you're going to say instead when Sue and here we'll say Hi Sue. Once again, we're not going to put quotes for the output, otherwise the output will use quotes. And then finally, you could just say H3 Hi you because you have no idea who they are. And then the final thing is you're also going to be able to run JavaScript just by coming in here and doing script, for example, with a dot after it. And then say something like console log and say something like hello Jade. And if we reload it, you're going to see that Hi Sue pops up inside of there. And you can see right here, Hello Jade pops up inside the console. So that's a whole bunch about conditionals and a whole bunch of other different things. Now we take a look at looping. So let's say we wanted to create an array again. And it's going to have quarterbacks inside of it. So we could say, and Brady. So there is our array. We're going to be able to loop through these guys. And let's say we want to put them in a list. So that's a little bit interesting. We're going to be able to do that with a for loop. So we'll say i is equal to 0. And we're going to continue looping as long as i is less than the total length of the quarterback's array. And then we're going to increment i at that point. Put a dash inside of there right before that closing curly bracket. 
and then indent inside of the four, and then we'll just say list item is equal to QBs and whatever the value of I is. And you can see it automatically generated that list for us from that array. Each is in a similar vein going to allow us to iterate over arrays as well as objects. So we could say come in here and do an unordered list and say each QB in QBS and then generate the list items like this. You can see it's a little bit shorter and you can see you get exactly the same results, so that's neat. Also going to be able to use while loops, so let's say that I wanted to generate a while loop that's going to output incrementing numbers from 1 to 20. Let's go and create a variable to start off with it, and then we'll go unordered list, and we'll say while i is less than or equal to 20. I'm going to keep generating list items like this, dash, and then we'll increment i like that. Make sure you put the closing semicolon in this situation, however, and you can see that it generated all those list items from 0 through 20. So very cool. And now let's take a look at mixins, which are really neat. Mixins are basically reusable pieces of code that are basically, when it comes down to it, JavaScript functions. And how we create them is we go mixin, say something like NFL player, and this mixin is going to receive a name, a position, and a team, and it's going to output information, which is going to be a list item. So we just put our hash symbol and name like that is the, again, hash symbol for the position for the, and then we're going to put team inside of that. We're then going to be able to call the mixin by going, let's just go UL, give that an ID, NFL players. And then to call the mixins, we just put a plus sign followed by NFL player, and then pass in the attributes we want to send to the mixin, or the function, or whatever you want to call it. Quarterback, Patriots, and then let's do a similar thing for Peyton Manning. And you can see that it generated those sentences right like that, so that's kind of cool. It's very important to know that mixins don't have to receive parameters, however, and can just provide output. So let's say we wanted to create a mixin that's going to automatically output a copyright symbol. We could do that. So let's just call it copy R, and then put a pipe right like this. We'll say and hash and 169. We could then come in, go paragraph, and put a plus sign, again, to call the mixin, copy R, and pipe. I'll put two spaces there, so there's a space between the copyright symbol. And there you can see it showed up. So neat. Now let's create a mixin that's going to allow us to receive a variable number of arguments. And so mixin, let's call this make list. It's, we're not going to define how many arguments we're going to get because we have no idea. I'm going to go ul. And let's go and create a variable. And we're going to turn the arguments object in this situation into an array. Prototype, slice, call, arguments. And then after that, we'll go for item in args and generate list items. So there we are. Now we can come in and call this mixin once again by putting a plus sign and make list and pass inside of it dog, cat, fish, reload, and it automatically created that list. So pretty neat stuff. Now let's talk about extend, which is basically going to allow us to replace blocks in a template sort of fashion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it extendex.jade. The name doesn't mean anything. But basically, blocks are containers that can be either replaced, appended, or prepended. So we can define block, and let's say that we have header here. Then inside of that, default data is going to, let's just put an h3 tag and put default header inside of it like this. Define another block, and let's call this content, and throw a paragraph inside of it, and call this default content. And let's create a couple other different content blocks inside of there as well. And then finally, let's throw a footer in here as well just to show you all the different ways we can mess around with this. Let's call this default footer, block content two, block content three, and let's just do the same thing here, two and three. And you're gonna see how we can either replace these different pieces of data or prepend or append them. So I'm gonna save that, and again, it's called extend ex.jade. Jump back over into jadetut.jade. Then we're gonna type in extends, and we're specifically going to call extend ex, which was the name of that file where we defined all those blocks. And then I'm going to say block header, and I can come in here and completely replace it by going h3 the title. I could also come in and completely replace the content by referring to the content block, and throw a paragraph inside of there, throw a pipe here, and then throw in some lorem ipsum. I could also come in and append data 
Make sure your indenting is properly done. When I come down here, I, you put spaces between all these things, by the way, doesn't matter. So I want to append content to what is already there. I just go append content and we'll go paragraph and pipe and I'll put appended data just so that shows up. And we also will be able to prepend just by going prepend. And in this situation, we'll prepend content area three with another paragraph and a pipe. And we'll say something like I come first. Save that. And you can see exactly how this information, the title went in and replaced this. It's supposed to be default header. The title replaced it because I told it to replace it. Also went in and replaced the first paragraph. Here we have the default information followed by the appended data. Here we prepended it before the default and we didn't do anything with the footer and so nothing was done with the footer. So there you go guys, that's pretty much all the basics you need to know about Jade. I just wanted to let you know that after the last month making only $3.49 off my previous eight videos, I decided I was going to have to do something if I wanted to continue making educational videos on YouTube. So I signed up at Patreon. If anybody would be nice enough to throw a dollar at me, I would greatly appreciate it. If not, I completely understand, however. And just like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.